Describe for our viewers out there exactly what it is that DMWrong.com does. So uh, DMWrong is an internet finance company. We combine technology with finance. We create financial products that are empowered by the internet to allow people with really small amounts to participate in the investment and lending into uh, communities in China. It's difficult uh, for someone who has a small amount of money like 10,000 RMB or 20,000 RMB to do lending in a safe way. So we use that amount and we distribute it across 35,000 different borrowers to reduce the risk. We also do the servicing of the loan, we do the collections if they are needed and we complete the whole cycle of lending and still keep the cost at a very, very, very low as much as possible. There is a, a, a big issue with lending, as we just heard from Jim Chanos, uh, uh, but lending in the China market and, and shadow banking and shadow lending and, and that industry overall. So how do you keep your risk profile down in a market like this, Sol? So uh, there, is a, there is a big uh, misunderstanding of what type of loans we offer. We actually offer the same type of loans that banks do offer. What we do is we empower our risk model with data, data that is not easy for banks to analyze and to use. So if you take uh, uh, the, the banking systems in China, they either focus on the super low risk assets or the super high assets. But there is a big portion of customers in the middle that are not necessarily people that have real estate, that are not necessarily people that have uh, 18 years of experience in the same job, and it's hard for them to underwrite. The main reason for them is because the cost of underwriting becomes too expensive. It doesn't make sense to lend someone money if the cost of operating it or underwriting it is 5-6%. So with our technology, with our system, we reduce the cost to 1%, so it still makes it economically doable. And that is the middle class of China that is going to be participating in the economy. So we need to give these people loans, and that will create a much bigger banking system in China, which is different than the shadow banking. Okay, uh, so let me just interrupt for one moment just to uh, uh, bring our viewers the uh, yuan midpoint, which the PBOC has set this morning. It's uh, coming through at 6.3772 versus the dollar versus the last close of 3.778. So no huge moves once again. In fact, very small moves indeed this morning. The yuan midpoint has been set by the PBOC at 6.3772 versus the last close, 6.3778. All right, uh, uh, let's get back to Seoul here and so tell me about the Bank of Tomorrow. Uh, this is really largely about internet finance and keeping things uh, very much, I, well I guess, to a certain point all on the internet, all virtual, virtual, all on the cloud. Absolutely. So what we believe if you take all the banking infrastructure that you have in China or in emerging markets in general and if you double it, it's impossible for this banking infrastructure to maintain the growth that these countries want to reach. So we don't know of any other way today other than the internet to help us create infrastructure that is going to scale the growth. So if you take uh, uh, a regular bank, for example, uh, the cost of asset liability management, the cost of building offices all around the country, the cost of hiring hundreds of thousands of people just to operate a lending business makes it impossible to reach the goals that we want to reach by 2020, 2025. If you look at a country like China, which is very familiar with super large numbers, there's a large migration from 